Lothar Mateus made his Bundesliga debut on September 22, 1979, and his career spanned nearly a quarter of a century. When he first started playing, legendary players such as Bobby Moore, George Best or Johan Cruyff were still active. By the time he retired, football was being dominated by the next generation of legends, with players such as Luis Figo, Zinedine Zidane or Thierry Henry. His longevity alone is impressive, but it only scratches the surface of his impact on the sport. Mateos was known for his attitude, leadership and ability to score goals, as well as his numerous trophies and his ability to adapt to different playing positions on the field. Compared to other footballers, Mateos' career is truly remarkable. The story begins in Bavaria, where he was born in March 1961. His journey in football started in a small town where his father worked at the Puma factory. It is fitting that Mateus began his career in a town that was also the base for Argentina's World Cup squad in 2006, as Diego Maradona once described Mateus as his toughest rival. Before being recognized by some of the top players in the game, Lothar Mateus' talent was first spotted by German talent scouts. In 1971, at the age of 18, Mateus was brought to his hometown team Borussia Mönchengladbach by Jupp Heynckes, who was in his first season as a coach. Mateus made his debut in a 4-2 loss against Kaiserslautern and went on to play in the central midfield for the remaining 27 league matches as Gladbach finished 7th in the league and lost in the UEFA Cup final to Frankfurt. In the next four seasons, Lothar Mateus established himself as one of Germany's top midfielders. He received his first call-up to the National Mannschaft at the end of his first full season and was part of the victorious Euro 1980 squad in Italy. Mateus was a versatile midfielder known for his ability to score spectacular goals. His last season with Mönchengladbach was his most successful, with a third place finish in the league and reaching the cup final. It was announced before the match that at the end of the season, Mateus would be joining Bayern München, the opponents Gladbach faced in the cup final. Unfortunately, the game went on to penalties and Mateus missed his spot kicks, controversially awarding the trophy to his future club. The decision to join Bayern München at the age of 23 marked a significant turning point in Mateus' career as he reached new levels of success. In his first season with Bayern, he finished as the league's top scorer with 16 goals and the team won both the Bundesliga and the Cup and reached the semi-finals of the Cup Winners' Cup, losing to Everton. These achievements would become routine for Mateus as he became a regular winner of trophies at the Olympiastadion. By this point, Mateus was the epitome of a complete midfielder, with a rare combination of two Footedness, power, speed, technical ability and set-piece expertise. He could play as a number 10 but could also drop deeper as a playmaker and make late runs into the box. At his best he was simply unplayable. In 1986, Mateus played a crucial role in helping West Germany reach the World Cup final in Mexico, but due to a tactical change by Franz Beckenbauer, he was assigned to mark Maradona rather than play in a more advanced position, which limited his contribution to the team as they ultimately lost against Argentina. Despite this disappointment, Mateus continued to achieve success with Bayern, winning the Bundesliga title again in 1986 and 1987. In a transfer that symbolized the peak of Serie A and before captaining his country in Euro 1988, Lothar Mateus announced that he would be joining Internazionale Milano. Giovanni Trapattoni, who had been tasked with bringing the Nerazzurri their first trophy in seven seasons, knew that Mateus was a key player to their resurgence. Just as Maradona had done four years earlier, Mateus' arrival energized Inter. His versatility and technical skills allowed him to score 12 goals, including a low-driven free kick against Napoli in May 1989. His vision also played a large role in helping Aldo Serena win the Coppa Canoniere. As a result, Inter won their fourth Scudetto since 1980. The following three seasons did not reach the same height as his first one, however, Mateus still had some notable moments. The turn of the decade also brought Mateus his crowning achievement as he captained West Germany to World Cup glory, showcasing his immense influence on the team he played for. He scored two goals in the opening group match against Yugoslavia and further strikes against the United Arab Emirates and Czechoslovakia as well as in the semi-final shootout against England. 
In the final, played in Rome, Mateus had the opportunity to redeem himself against Argentina, determined not to repeat the same mistakes as four years earlier. He demonstrated his superior defensive intelligence by effectively marking Maradona out of the game. Mateus should have also taken the winning penalty, but due to the sole of his boots cracking in the first half, he felt more comfortable letting his inter teammate Andreas Bremer take the shot. Nevertheless, Mateus's outstanding performances throughout the tournament were instrumental in West Germany's triumph and as captain, it was fitting that he lifted the trophy, which was a symbol of the reunification of Germany. In recognition of his effort, he was named German Footballer of the Year as well as receiving the 1990 Ballon d'Or and the inaugural FIFA World Player of the Year in 1991. This was going to be the last major success Matteus experienced in Italy as his final season with Inter was marked by the replacement of Trapattoni with a defensive-minded Corrado Orico. Matteus scored only 4 goals as Inter finished 8th in the league. Additionally, a planned move to Juventus to reunite with his former coach fell through after Matteus ruptured his cruciate ligament in a 0-0 draw with Parma in early April 1992. At the age of 32, it seemed like the beginning of the end for Matthäus' career. That summer, he received a call from Beckenbauer and invited him to return to Germany despite his injury. Inter, believing his best days were behind him, were happy to accept a transfer fee of around 1.5 million pounds. The Bayern team that Matthäus joined was also in turmoil, having ended the previous season in 10th place behind teams such as Krausler and Nuremberg. Despite missing preseason and most of August and September, in his first year back, Matthäus helped Bayern finish just one point behind champions Werder Bremen. For most footballers, the early 30s marks the beginning of the end of their career, but with Matthäus, it is difficult to pinpoint when his best years occurred. One could divide his career into two parts, before and after a ruptured Achilles tendon in 1995 that sidelined him for almost a year. Before the injury, Matthäus was a dynamic midfielder, known for his ability to score goals with both feet and his head, as well as his defensive capabilities. After the injury, coupled with his advancing age, he lost some of his physical power. It was then that coach Bertie Vox converted him into one of the best liberals in the game, relying more on his superior vision and reading of the game to make up for his lost physicality. From the position of libero, Matthäus led Bayern to a host of honors throughout the 90s, starting with the 1994 Bundesliga title. One notable absence for Matthäus's otherwise illustrious career is the lack of a Champions League trophy. He came close several times with a semi-final defeat to Ajax in 1995 and two runners-up medals from losses to Porto in 1987 and of course the memorable defeat against Manchester United in 1999. Matthäus did win the German Footballer of the Year award again at the age of 38, but it was little consolation for his final years. One could also see the move to New York Metro Stars in March 2000 as a cynical one, driven by Matthäus' desire to live in Manhattan and promote his then-girlfriend's modeling career. He played only 21 games in the MLS and made little impact before retiring. Matthäus tried his hand in management, but his career was also marked by strange decisions and oddities, such as his nomadic journey through Austria, Bulgaria, Hungary, Israel and Serbia, none of which ended particularly successfully. We can also add here an 8-game stint as coach of Brazilian team Atletico Paranense, which was plagued by controversy as he was fired after taking an unauthorized trip back to Europe. This was reportedly due to accusation from his then-wife that he was having an affair with a Brazilian journalist. It is difficult to pin down a specific role for Matthäus as he was a versatile player who could play in multiple positions on the field. He was a unique and complete footballer who will be long remembered as one of the greatest to ever play the game. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate your support. If you found out something new or compelling, please leave this video a like and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Your feedback is important to me and it helps me create better content for you. If you enjoyed this video, you might also want to check out something similar by clicking right here. I think you'll find it just as engaging and informative as this one. Make sure to also hit the subscribe button so you never miss out on new content. Thanks again for watching.